Hi, I'm Audrey Hassan, your host for Broad and High, the ultimate intersection of arts and culture, where we explore the character and creativity not only in Columbus, but across the country. They're just two deer, lounging on the banks of the Scioto River, watching the world go by. The City of Columbus recently commissioned Santa Fe artist Terry Allen to create and install a couple of whimsical sculptures along the banks of the downtown riverfront. Titled Scioto Lounge, the deer with strangely human-like features seem to be comfortably settled into their new and permanent surroundings. Initially, um, when I came here, I, I'd never looked at Columbus from the point of view of really doing something out in the city. So I roamed around the city and, and uh, looked at different sites and proposed different kind of ideas in my mind of, of things I could do. But I heard uh, someone say that Scioto uh, River meant hair of the deer. But that kind of piqued an interest in, and I started thinking about deer. and I, it was supposed to be a, a kind of in this area where people lounged around and walked around and took it easy. I just started thinking about deers instead of people doing the same thing, just kind of lounging around. And that's really where the idea came from. When I do have a project, that's the first thing I do is start drawing and making notes and just kind of thinking, getting it out of my head onto a sheet of paper. And uh, it can go whatever, you know, any direction, kind of. Uh, so there's, there's several proposals that I made, not just the deer. I proposed uh, uh, for Spring and Long Street, uh, neons, that, for springing and longing that would be on these uh, tunnels that people go in and out of. There's one called the Columbus Stump, which is a huge tree stump with carvings in every conceivable language that says wish. Some of them are absolutely impossible. You know, that's where the, the possible impossible. Uh, some of them were made. Others are just wishful thinking, you know, whatever. So uh, there's, it's really more of a thought process, I think, that happens on paper. Did the drawings and had ideas of what they, they were, might look like. Uh, I've gotten forms from a taxidermist uh, in Louisiana of, and they're actual styrofoam forms that uh, taxidermy guys use to put the, you know, after they skin the deer, they put it back on. And I used that as an armature and worked in a, a foundry that I've worked at for years at Walla Walla, Washington. So we set up, sawed up these pieces and built them and kind of constructed them into um, uh, the forms that we, you see out there now and covered them with clay and modeled the clay and then they made a uh, uh, mold from them. It's, it's hard to, when you're talking about deer, I think people instantly have a, an image in their head of of whatever deer they see as a sculpture in their mind. And these are really, you kind of have to be there. You have to go look because they've been humanized in the sense that they still look like deer, but they're also human. And as far as a lot of their joints, you would never see joints like that on a, on a real deer. But I did that to kind of, I think, make them accessible. I think that's what's so seductive to me about it is, is that it becomes really something that people want to want to want to be with and want to you know actually touch. Mm -hmm. 
No matter how, how, how you think through something, as soon as it's there, it's real, and it becomes something else. It becomes its, its own life, you know, and, and that's really important, I think, that it does something, that it doesn't just sit there, you know, and say, I'm a politician, or I'm a general, or whatever. This one's sitting there as a deer, you know, and, and it's not saying anything, <laughs> you know, it's just sitting there. And I love it when somebody responds in a way I never anticipated or says something you never anticipated and makes you think about it in a way you never thought, you know. But I think that that's what happens with public work and that's why I think they're so important uh, because it really is something that's, even though it's public, it's so personal to each viewer, each person that looks at it. I think it's resistance people will have to, to public works is usually because they encounter it and they're used to passing, the habit of passing a place day after day after day, and then suddenly there's something different there, you know. And almost immediately, for some weird reason, different means wrong, it's bad, <laughs> you know. It's blocking something, it's doing something, whatever. And, uh, but I think over time people get comfortable.